I am recording this message as a warning to future generations. I know it may be hard for you to believe, but there were once billions of human beings on Earth with great technology, hundreds of cities, flying machines, and such. I know this to be true because I have seen it. I was the first born in space, and if not for that action, humanity would have been completely lost. My first memory was looking down on Earth from space. My first five years I spent in space with the other survivors, watching as the world burned. I was there when humanity got its second chance. So as I speak to you today, I speak to you from remembrance. I speak to you from experience. And I speak to you with the guidance of our forefathers. It all started the summer of 2014, the hottest year of record. Drought plagued the planet, and that is when the lady in the red dress appeared. With elegance and grace, she visited all the world's leaders, told them of the dire situation, and asked for a meeting. This meeting of the world's most powerful people would discuss the Earth's future and the earth moving forward. She only called herself by one name, and that name was Gaia. It was agreed that in one week, all the earth's leaders would gather in one place to hear the message at the same time. But those who had power, those who would lose power, those who would stand not to gain power, also wanted to be at this meeting, but they were denied. So these people sent their agents, sent their minions to distort the facts, to distort what was really going on and to stop Gaia from speaking. It is this short-sightedness, this misdirection of thought that doomed the human race. For when humanity convened at the UN a week later. Humanity stood to hear the message from Gaia, but those who would not listen, those who would not concede the actual reality, they doomed us all. And for that, we paid the price. After the attempt on Gaia's life, she decided that humanity was not worth saving. It was only when the golems arose from the wintry depths of this ocean that we realized what we had done. They quickly destroyed all the leaders of man and all the generals and all the colonels and all the captains and all the war machines of the world quickly spun in order to respond to the new threat, the new enemy, the earth itself. We brought forth fire, we brought forth steel, we brought forth iron, and the earth responded. It attacked, it took to the sky, it took to the ground, and it took to the water, and we did not stand a chance. So we sent our best, our brightest, and our smartest to space to the space station we had built through cooperation. It would be our ark. It would be our bastion from the destruction of the human race completely. And hopefully in time, we could return back to the earth. For the humans on the planet, if they fled the water, they were destroyed by water. If they fled to ice, they were destroyed by ice. If they fled to the air, they were destroyed by wind. It did not matter where you hid on the planet. Gaia was going to find you. After five years in space, the 22 remaining humans returned to Earth. And that is when we were greeted by Gaia. And my parents pleaded to Gaia that I was not of this earth, 
I was born in space. She had no dominion over me, and she had no dominion over any of the other children that they had brought back to Earth. Gaia agreed. She agreed to give these space children another chance, to give us another opportunity to prove our greatness. We accept it. With that said, I am now warning you and the future generations of what is to come if you abuse Gaia's Earth. <laughs>